Welcome back to UMass Shackback. I'm your rightful host, Jake Liberty, back in my throne. We've got a great show for you today, a lot of topics to debate. First, we'll start off with Elizabeth Warren versus Guy Fieri as the UMass commencement speaker. Then we'll move on to the controversial Pepsi commercial that Pepsi just released. And finally, we'll clear it up with a great debate and debate topics of our own. Who knows what we'll cover in this episode of Yakback. You don't want to miss it, so stick around. This is UMass Yakback. Welcome to our first segment here where we'll debate the UMass commencement speaker, originally Guy Fieri, supposedly, but now Elizabeth Warren, still a great choice or a horrible choice, depends which side of the party you fall on. Here to talk about it, we have one, two, three. Ladies, thanks for joining me. Please introduce yourselves. Yeah, Jake. <laughs> I'm Molly, and you know that. I want a fun fact. Thanks, Jake. I'm Kate. <laughs> You should probably know that, too. I do know it. And I'm Jenna, but I'm, like, kind of new, so it's okay. Well, I knew it. No. <laughs> but don't, I just want you guys to introduce don't, yourselves. Don't, don't take don't that. Don't let, let him, don't give him some slack. <laughs> don't let okay. him off the hook. All right, he well, should, anyways. He should, <laughs> he should be punished. <laughs> fun, um, fun fact about myself. Fun fact about yourself. I'm a huge Food Network fan. Okay. And I previously interned for Elizabeth Warren, so this is a controversial huge area Huge debate. Yeah, this That's is exciting. controversial. Would you like me to talk about it? No, I'd like you to save your ideas and right. talk about it on the next segment. Okay. Yes, please go first. Um, so basically what happened was that the Daily Collegian does their yearly April Fool's prank. And um, it was done on April 3rd, um, which was a Monday. So obviously it's a printing day for them, but it led people to believe that it was not an April Fool's joke. Um, and they announced that Guy Fieri would be the commencement speaker for this year's graduation, which excited a lot of people, including me, and I know including you. Including me, I, fire, I was fired up. I was like ecstatic. Guy Theory is gonna come in town. Flavor Town USA, baby. Yeah. Back to Amherst, but I guess not. Yeah, and it had some kind of quote about um, Subaswami saying he like, um, he like embodies the like American dream or like, the values <laughs> of the American dream. Um, so obviously that was an April Fool's prank, and but not were, really. If you yeah think yeah. about our food reputation, I wouldn't be surprised if Guy Fieri came in hot. No, it wasn't. It wasn't completely unbelievable. But um, towards the bottom of the column, it did say that like it was released by the Morning Wood staff and it was um, tagged as an April Fool's joke, and the Morning Wood staff is like a parody. Um, so yeah, so it ended up being an April Fool's joke, but conveniently, and I don't know if the Daily Collegian knew this or planned this, but um, UMass announced that their commencement speaker would be Elizabeth Warren, and it was on the same day, which was <laughs> hilarious um, oh. to dispel those rumors. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, you'd think if you'd been paying attention, you've seen the big, you know, morning wood banner on top <laughs> of the paper and known to take everything in it with a grain of salt. But I mean, that was also when the you know movie critic, the film critic, who you know is extremely harsh on all movies, like printed a glowing review of the Boss Baby, saying it's the height of cinema. Like I would like to think <laughs> that you know. On the other hand, I initially heard that Guy Fieri was going to be the commencement speaker, and I'm. I, I was excited, and I, I was looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I kind of, um, well, it's not, like, completely unbelievable. Like, what if he's, like, the most famous person they could find, and they were just going based off that? So then, like, that's why he said... He's the most famous person ever. That's true. He's probably the most influential person in the world. So. 100%. <laughs> no, because then it would just make sense how, like, Subaswami was, like... Okay, but that that is, like, a little... Like, <laughs> it's something you mass would do. Like, yeah, it's so extra. Let's just get Guy Theory. It is extra. <laughs> Last year, just to give you an idea of how extra our school is, especially when it comes to dining, we've had people dress up as peanuts, 
Um, last year we had a Canada themed dining day where we had people actually dressed as Mounties walking around the dining halls. The UMass is really excellent. And, um, <laughs> and What's like Canadian food even like it was, maple bacon and poutine? Yeah. yeah, and salmon pretty much. It was just different universities represented, but they had like giant lanterns like flaming up outside the dining hall. So yeah, you never you never know what to expect with UMass, so that's why I wasn't surprised. Um, that Guy Fieri would be um, our commencement speaker, but I'm still, but I'm still excited about Elizabeth Warren because she is a really high-profile person to be here. I think so too. I think she's really. I mean, she definitely encompasses the values that Massachusetts and a lot of the Democrats in the area hold true. So I mean, it. She's appealing to a mass audience. Yeah. Um, but of course, with every political figure, you're going to get those who are up in arms, someone said they're not going anymore. <laughs> it's gonna be inspirational. She's not gonna go up there and start talking politics, I'm sure, but she's gonna start talking about what it means to graduate and all the inspirational things. And that's gonna be great. Be I'm not gonna be there. Be I don't wanna be there. I'm going to my one BDIC graduation and then yeah. out of there. That Friday. I think you're passing that up. I'm not sitting there while 5,000 students cross the stage. No, thank you. Yeah, I know a lot of Hard like- that's not, how it, that's not what commencement is, but. Oh. <laughs> you don't all receive your diplomas, but no, but it I is. I'm going to get your diploma mailed to you, but yeah. I'd rather just go to my small college one because the big one, like, it's not something that I'm, I'm gonna, just going to change my life whether I went to commencement or not. No, I understand that. It is like, I think it's a special moment and I would take advantage of it, but I understand that because for you, Mass, like, graduation is a weekend affair. Like, you have, and if you're more than one major, you could go to multiple like small graduations for each of your majors um, and the different colleges you are part of. So I understand like wanting to cut corners in that respect. We'll see. I'm still debating it. Like if my friends go, I might as well, but I feel like if I don't, I'm not going to be too bummed out. Now if it was Guy Fieri, oh, <laughs> yeah. well, I would have I would have sat through 5,000 students wow. just to see Guy Fieri because that would have been the They most don't walk across the stage during commencement. Would have <laughs> been the most Okay, electric. but Elizabeth Warren is like, no offense to Guy Fieri, but Elizabeth Warren is like actually important. <laughs> whoa. 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 Yeah. Uh, whoa. Now you, you just said. started a fire. You heard what I said. On what level is Guy Fieri not important? Much more important than Elizabeth Warren. There are hundreds of politicians. There's only one Guy Fieri. <laughs> Keep going. I'm not sure I have anything to say to that. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> guy Fieri, Flavor Town, USA. There's only one guy with that type of hair. I have a Those question. type of shirts. Yeah, but I have a question for you. If you had the choice of commencement speakers between Guy Fieri and John Cena, who would you pick? Oh, no. <laughs> John Cena, because then he would come out so it. hot. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Yeah. But it's Elizabeth Warren, so we'll see what she can do. Thanks for sticking <laughs> around. Make sure to check out our second segment coming up, in which we'll talk about the controversial Pepsi ad with Kendall Jenner. Welcome back to our second segment. Uh, again, I'm your host, Jake, here with, let's see if I can get it this time. I believe Megan, you. Kristen, Jackie. My right. sister's That's name. not right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Molly, Kate, Jenna. Welcome, yeah. welcome, welcome. <laughs> Good back. to be back, Jake. Yeah, it's been a it's long been time. It's been so long. Yeah. Jacob. It's been a little too long. James. All right. Let's get it right into it. After last segment's great debate on Elizabeth Warren or John Cena or Guy Fieri. Now it's time to debate the Pepsi ad that just came out. Yeah, Kendall Jenner is now the leader of the uniting movement for all people. For and all people. I, and I all can't right believe there. Kendall all Jenner single-handedly solved racism. By yeah. literally single-handedly handing a Pepsi to a cop. It was just ass. I don't know if you've seen it. I recommend <laughs> checking it out just for the laughs, but we'll talk about it yeah. in any sense. What did you guys think? Um, I, 
I viewed the commercial, I laughed at the commercial, honestly, um, because not in that it was inherently racist and like villainous, but that it was just such a force. It was an incredible force because Pepsi was really trying to kind of capitalize off of the whole protest thing as a pop culture movement um, and make Kendall Jenner kind of the leader of this movement and solve all of the world's problems by simply giving a policeman a Pepsi and him smiling and drinking it and everyone being like, yeah, like, and just all the token minorities were represented. It was just really like, it was so thinly veiled basically. Um, and it just was so disappointing to see. Um, <laughs> it was so <laughs> shitty. And within... How did that get passed? Yeah. And um, within, I believe, an hour of it being released, people were so mad about it that Pepsi took it down and immediately apologized. And their apology also included an apology to Kendall Jenner for putting her in that position, which is hilarious because she still made money and she still decided to do it in the first place. So... I mean, if you're Kendall Jenner, you're not really going to pass up on that opportunity. No, you love yeah. your face everywhere. You love the attention. So you're going to be the one who unites all people. Of course not. I don't look in to her. In that own little whatever world that they kind of live in. Yeah, I don't look to her as a moral compass. No one so, does. Like, I don't expect it from her. No, she's just garbage. Her and her whole family. Mm -hmm. I don't mean that. I don't mean I that do mean to be that. mean, but yeah. like. I don't mean that to be I mean. Do. I mean that is that it's just they're all sad just too rich and doing. famous for their own good. Yeah. Yeah. We watched the commercial, and it was just, like, tone deaf. Like, it started out strong. It's like, okay, you know, people united, and Pepsi is all American, and people are all American, and it's like, okay. But then it gets to, like, you know, Kendall Jenner immediately becomes the, you know, leader of this protest movement. It's extremely bland protest movement, <laughs> if you'd notice that all the signs say things like peace and love and togetherness, and there's you know no political. There's no politics there's no, like, involved at all. Yeah, yeah. there's no fuck this, Trump. This was like yeah. probably one of the saddest like attempts to appeal to millennials. <laughs> like this, like it's really funny when these companies try to do that because they just think, but like they just they just can't. It's We're also we don't even need that. Yeah, and, and it's also like shallow and mm -hmm. they're like what do Very millennials shallow. like millennials like protesting okay yeah. let's like sell it was almost something like, like based this on cool vibe walking down the street like they have had commercials like that before where people are all walking down yeah. in celebration of something this is a dead ass protest yeah and they're all just like dancing around with music no, playing I can't stop. and then yeah and then it gets to the you know confrontation between the protest and the police and yeah, you know, we've all seen how those go down in real life. And then Kendall Jenner walks up and hands a police officer a Pepsi, and the police decide, "Hey, maybe we should just like be nice to each other, man." You know, and it's, it's just so cheap. And it's, it's so just cheap. it's just so unreflective of current Which, events. She's white and privileged. Like, yeah, it's. Yeah. I also think just giving it to the cops, like. You know, it's not like they're the whole problem surrounding, I mean, there have been plenty of stories with it, but by giving it to them, it's basically uniting good and bad, and I didn't like that message. I, yeah. Like, they were just standing there trying to defend the wall because you got a group of people coming at you. Yeah, why would she be giving, like, the cop, like, a gift? Like, If the cops were, like, throwing shit like they were doing for Blarney 2013, then <laughs> I don't understand that. But they were just standing there like, fuck, I don't want to deal with you. Yeah, people. it just creates a binary relationship of like good and bad, um, whichever way you view it. And uh, it was it was just cheap, basically. And it, it was like cringeworthy in the sense of, if you recall Hil Hillary's election um, and her campaign, anytime she would try to do something relatable, it was very forced. It, <laughs> yeah. was, it was that feeling of force, and that's how I feel about this ad in particular, but it's even more distasteful. Yeah, very distasteful. Yeah, because, I mean, that was, like, you know, whatever. It was, like, kind of funny. But, like, this ad is, uh, there's just something that's really off-putting about trying to capitalize on, like, the people's earnest and genuine, like, outrage and search for, like, um, you know, rights and liberties and freedoms and like turn it into a marketing campaign. Like it's just sort of a fad that they're trying to capitalize on. It's really, it's an old white capitalist's idea of what, you know, millennials like. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. and I agree with that. And actually, our producer Perry pointed out that um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter had tweeted, um, if, if only my father knew that um, Pepsi basically was a miracle cure in this system, um, that Pepsi would have changed everything and made it for the better because you reflect on any of the protests during either the Vietnam or um, any kind of race issue. And it was just such a long, drawn-out process, and nothing gets rectified by a cold beverage as much as we'd like it to. I think it was an actual picture of uh, Martin Luther King like confronting a policeman, and it was, uh, if only Daddy knew the power of Pepsi. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah, if it was that easy, I'm sure we wouldn't even need this commercial. Yep. But alas. <laughs> so I'm drinking Coke. Co yeah, Coke <laughs> yeah. Coke's probably sitting there like these yeah. chums. Like. They're way better at doing their commercials, too. Oh, yeah. I agree. They Could, tackled, um, when they tried to do like that, they're like multicultural commercial. They mm -hmm. tackled it so well, it wasn't like, and they didn't make it seem too political or too forced or preachy or anything. Yeah. yeah. Pepsi really. And, yeah, and that's the it. thing, right? Coke like coke's commercials like work because they're like everybody likes coke and like you know that includes everybody we're all american and that's cool and pepsi was like pepsi is actually you know what is going to solve racism forever and it's just like o o okay yeah. and it's just like that's the sort of you know celebration of diversity versus like here's an easy fix to problems that we've all been seeing have no easy quick fixes yeah. and it just comes off as tactless yeah pepsi half-assed it yeah well as a general rule we all know now that coke is definitely better <laughs> yeah coke is the way to go yeah you heard it here <laughs> back to our third and final segment on The Great Debate, in which we'll debate a handful of topics, either in detail or just rapid fire. We'll see. Here we have Molly and Kate for round three. Burnsy, welcome back to the show. All right, start off with the UMass classic question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes. Yes. By, really? by the rules of nature, yes. What are the rules of nature? Um, so a sub is considered a Hold sandwich. that. Let me hear your opinion first. A hot dog is not a sandwich. Not a sandwich. I'm going to say no. Two. No? Yeah. Two no's and a yes. I'm on the yes. Let's hear why you say yes. So um, by the constructed rules, a sub is considered a sandwich because it has two pieces of bread connected. And the fact that they're connected is just... Um, minutia, really. Because think about it, if you have a meatball sub and it gets soggy and separates, then it's suddenly a sandwich. Um, so by that logic, that means that a hot dog would be a sandwich. I like it. I'm with it. Let's yeah. hear on the no side. But see, you're debating the physical properties of the hot dog. And food isn't just its physical properties, it's the whole cultural construction around them. Is a tomato a a fruit or a vegetable? I mean, scientifically, according to its properties, it would be a fruit, but everyone knows that it's a vegetable. Okay. And in the same way, a hot dog may have some of like the superficial, you know, physical qualities of a sandwich, but it doesn't have the je ne sais quoi that makes it a Ooh. sandwich. You have to have more than just one piece of meat and one piece of bread to mm -hmm. have a sandwich. Big time vocabulary. Burnsy, what do you got? Um, I think what makes a sandwich, I think you touched on it, is the bread is separated. Mm -hmm. And with a hot dog and a sub, it's connected, so it's a sub or a bun. But a sandwich is two pieces of bread, and you put stuff in the middle. That's what a sandwich is to me. So I'm going now. Well, a bun? Uh, what about burger buns? Sandwich. Yeah. Okay. So a so burger is a sandwich. I think mm -hmm. it is be for the same logic as you. However, the National Hot Dog and Sausage Coalition Foundation Association, I think. Whatever. Hey. Bless you. Bless you. Sorry. Found that. Oh, over the mic. Um, 
found that. That it's actually not a sandwich. Okay. They said that it's not, it's its own separate entity. So it's, it's does, is it just that alone? Nothing else falls under the hot dog category? I don't think so. I think maybe a, hot, a sandwich, I, maybe yeah, a sub. Because, I mean, when you're eating a hot dog or a sausage, it's not the, you don't conceive of it as the whole entity together. You think of it as you're eating the meat part and the the bread is a convenient way to, you know, hold on to it. Well, that, is, it, that is fair because a hot dog can be considered a hot dog without the bread. Exactly. There you go. And a That's sandwich fair, yeah. isn't a sandwich without the bread. Well, let's keep mm -hmm. up the debates going mm -hmm. forth with mm -hmm. hot dogs. Relish your mustard. 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 If I had to choose relish, but I don't know. Ketchup. Just ketchup. In the just mix. Ketchup. Throw ketchup in the mix. Like uh, mustard is just gross. Relish is all right. Ketchup is where it's at. I put all three. Yeah, I would. I think it's dank. I love getting just a jambalaya mixture of food and just eating it. So like all three with like chopped onions and stuff, like a real how hot dogs meant to be. Great. Um, but if I had to pick one of the condiments, I guess I would pick ketchup out of the three. Oh, have you had looks... a Cumberland Farms hot dog? I haven't. Oh my god, they've got like, uh, you can make it um, a chili cheese dog. They've got chili, which is very questionable mm -hmm. chili. Yeah, dog. yeah, of course. And cheese, which is very questionable cheese because it's Cumberland, Cumberland Farms. Farms. If you're but having it's still, a <laughs> it's still so good. If you're yeah. having a chili cheese dog, the chili and the cheese have to be questionable. It just comes with the territory. I agree. That's true. <laughs> Unless you get it in Mexico. Do they have them in Mexico? I mean, well, is they that have like chili there? I mean, yeah, but is, that a, is a chili cheese dog a Mexican dish? That's it doesn't a broad seem very <laughs> stereotype. But moving on. Mexico. Where else? Well, where is chili? <laughs> Chile. How stupid of me. Chile. <laughs> Chile. It's found in Chile. Let's let's I ask. Don't know. Let's ask Mike his opinion. Mike. Mike. What was the question again? <laughs> I don't know. Ketchup, mustard, or relish? <laughs> oh, yeah. Ketchup, definitely. Okay. Next yeah. topic, please. Nike or Adidas? Um, Adidas. Underdog. I'm sick of the branding of Nike. Okay. What do you have against the branding of Nike? It's just too much. It suggests elite athleticism, and it's just shoved down your throats everywhere. So I'm sick of it. That's fair. Yeah. Kate? I don't know. I wear New Balance and have for <laughs> years. A very reliable <laughs> and consistent brand. Yeah. That's an underdog. Adidas is not an underdog. Saucony is also an underdog. Who? Saucony. Puma? Saucony. Okay. Well, I would pick Nike, but it's like the reason Molly said. There's no good reason. It's just because they brand themselves so well. Yeah. So they do have a good brand. They're definitely yeah. the front of um, sneakers. It's ubiquity is frustrating, though. Like, you ever see something so much, you just get sick of it? Yeah, that's my. That's why I feel the way I do. I, I guess, but I think they always put out new stuff. All right, well, that's all the time we have this week. I want to thank you again for sticking around. If you laugh, thank you for laughing. If you didn't, Thank you for leaving. It has been an awkward 30 minutes per usual of you just staring at me. But I did enjoy taking back the throne for this episode. Christine will be back next week. She's just dealing with some sort of black plague, so hopefully she doesn't die. Again, my name is Jake Liberty. If you enjoyed yourself, if you didn't, my name is Christine Swalia. And this has been UMass Yakback. We'll see you next Thursday, folks.